I speak to these gamers that are literally, you know, making waves across the African, African continent, more inspired and becoming um, by the stories that, that, that these individuals have to tell. And, and the man I'm about to speak to is no exception to that rule. Um, his family calls him Brian. And those that challenge him in the game, they call him the beast. It's a great pleasure to welcome to the Punchy Kiki show, Brian. Brian, I mean, oh, I mean, your story is just absolutely fascinating. Brian Younger, Thank you're you. coming to me. I mean, we're chatting right now. I'm in South Africa. You're in, in, in Nairobi, Kenya. Thanks so much for the yeah. time. Thanks so much for, 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 for chatting to us. And, and, and Tommy, yeah. I mean, Tell us very quickly, Brian in a nutshell, who is Brian? Uh, Brian is like the big bad wolf, but inside is like the three little pigs. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, how I, that's, that's how I can define myself so fast. It's like on the outside, I look like a very tough nut, a tough shell. That's how I even got the name Beast. But deep down, I'm just that gamer, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm easy and um, I'm, I'm open to ideas and especially let's say my profession goes around tech and technology. So, you know, I'm those, I, I can say I'm those techie, I'm, I'm of the techie generation. Yeah, but either way, I'm easy, out, outspoken. I'm actually an introvert and extrovert at the same time. You, you know, as gamers, yeah, we have those complicated complexes, yeah. Yeah, but nothing uh, hard to overcome. But that, that is just a bit of me, yeah, a little bit. Brian, you've yeah. been described as as one of the young stars that is inspiring an esports wave across Africa. Um, I mean, yeah. that is that is that is a very very um, uh, proud sort of achievement to be to be described along with the other sort of young stars that 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 you've been lumped together. Um, yeah, fascinating, um, massive achievement for you, but surely that also comes with a huge amount of responsibility. Exactly. And uh, for me, my responsibility is not even in gaming only, it starts from at home. So for those who know me, I'm, I'm a firstborn and I'm a firstborn to six siblings. So imagine six siblings and they always watch me game. And we were brought up by our mother alone. My dad died a while back. So it's just been me, my mom, and the siblings. So it has also been my duty to take care of the rest of them, plus me included. So I take care of all of us. And uh, just being being there, I already feel the weight. I know the worth of being handed over responsibility, you know? So being given the title of the beast, uh, I try my best as possible to be like the father figure I am at home. Mine, I always feel like, you know, people ask, what is next with the beast? Who are you going to challenge next? But I'm like, no, Africa, we're still young. And uh, to be honest, we are like 20 years behind in the gaming industry. So for me as the beast, I feel like it's my duty to give rise to more beasts, you know? Of course, there's only me as the beast, but I feel like, <laughs> I feel like we need to grow this step. We need to take this place. We need to get to the point where we have servers in Africa, whereby I am not, uh, I am not, I am, I am handicapped in a game, you know? We are playing, I can't play somebody from the US. If, for example, I look up to somebody like Sonic Fox. Who doesn't know Sonic Fox? Yeah. We all know Sonic Fox. But can I ever play with Sonic Fox? Unless I can afford a plane ticket to the US, I can never play Sonic Fox, you see? And this limits my growth as an athlete, you know? Because the more I play with folks, I will know how this works and I will feel the play and you can adapt to that, you know. But if you're only watching it on TV and then you get the chance to play, it's, it's, it's two different things. So personally, at this level, I feel like my duty is not to kick ass as I did before. Yes, I still keep kicking ass, but I feel like it's time to educate Africa and put them on the gaming map. We need to catch up with the world because the world is about tech these days. We have a new Samsung, we have a new iPhone every other day. You know, even though you play online sometimes and somebody's asking you, uh, should I send you water in a box and stuff like that? No, we actually have internet and all this cool stuff down here, yeah? yeah? And it's time we embrace and show the world out there that, hey, we're not only good in physical sports, but we are also good in esports. Yes, I, I think that is the message I want to help get across and help educate young Africans across Africa to join on this, you know? Because at the end of the day is about, I, personally, I feel like it's about what you do, you know? What you give back, What? because what, for me to get to this place where I am today, 
it's, I always kind of put it like it's been because of people's mercy, you know? I grew up in a hood where uh, hopes were easily shattered. Uh, I can tell you for free that all my friends or half of the people I grew up with never made it past 20 years. So living in Kibera, I can say I only have something like two or one friend around, yeah? The rest who are out there, they either died, they enjoyed crime. You know, it, it, it doesn't, growing in the ghetto doesn't give you a lot of options. You know, if you're not smart and decide to persevere, you'll just drown. You'll just be, you'll just join the system. You grow up, you become a thug as they portray you or us in the ghetto, and that's how you end up, you see? But for me, um, I got gaming and I'm glad I got gaming as a kid and it helped me survive through some tough shit, man. It helped me survive through some tough shit. And being that I was I think, able to- I think, I think that's, that's where I want to jump in here. It's, is, I mean, yeah. you were born in Kibera, uh, as you say. Um, Kibera yeah. is, is, I think, acknowledged as the largest slum on the African continent. Um, yeah. A really, really tough place for anyone to live, let alone for a young kid to grow up. Um, like yeah. you said, many of your friends that you knew growing up probably didn't make it past the age of 20 years old. Um, yeah. and, and I mean, that is a sorry tale in itself. But for you, you know, tough, tough lessons learned there. That is where you discovered gaming for the very first time. Um, yeah. You picked up on, on, on your first games ever. And, and it was, you know, from that perspective, you, yeah. you saw your very first fighting game, which was, was Tekken 2, um, back when yeah. you were still very, very young. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I remember. Uh, the, no, the first game I saw was on a Nintendo. This one for shooting the ducks. You remember yes. this? There was a Terminator and then the Nintendo. So yeah. shoot the duck. Yeah. Actually, it's my uncle who came home with it. And I remember I was in preschool back then and we owned a TV back then. And then problems kicked in. My dad became an alcoholic. We lost our house. We lost everything. And then I was still going in school. And next to my school, there was a gaming cafe called After Homework. Oh, the thing is, we used to go, yeah, yeah. The thing is, we used to go to after homework before we did our homework, you know. <laughs> I think we even bought the place closed like twice by the school management. So, yeah, the first time I went to this place, I remember I entered immediately as the intro to Tekken 2 was playing. And then, you know, I saw King, like he had the leopard head and he was well built and he, was, he looked like Arnold Schwarzenegger with a, with a leopard head, you know. And I was a fan of Arnold as a kid. I, I don't know who, which kid in my time was. It. So, when I saw this, I was like, damn, now this is the shit. And then I started playing Crash Bandicoot. I played Turok. And then this guy brought Sega. And when he brought Sega, he brought MK. And I was just like, this is my game. I, I, the, I don't know. The, there was a way they did the animations and the graphics. I was just like, this is my game. And the fact that I was winning too much, I was just like, yeah, uh, I'm doing this. But by then doing that, I was subconsciously like trying to survive outside. The outside was was kind of a, like a, like hell, you know. Yeah. So for me to balance what was going outside, my escape was video gaming. There was too much violence. There was too much crime at home. Um, my home was torn apart by my dad because he was an alcoholic. So the only way I could cope, or I can say, my drug was gaming. That was my escape. If you ever wanted me, I I became a professional a long time ago because I remember guys would get stuck on missions and they would pay me to pass for them, you know? So it's, it's not just something I started doing. I, I actually got started getting paid a long time ago. I just didn't notice it. So yeah, this is this gaming for me, I can say it just saved my life. Literally, it saved my life. Because I always tell myself, if I wasn't in that space gaming, I would have been outside with my friends. And some of my friends have just died because of association, you know? You work with somebody and you don't know what they do, they get gunned down. You get gunned down with them because you're seen with them. So yeah. you're definitely doing what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. So being in that gaming space sheltered me from all this garbage that was happening outside. It's not that I haven't encountered. Actually, personally, I have been uh, in a case of mistaken identity. And what this means is, yeah, I've been wanted by police and shot at, at three times. Oh, I survived three fucking times. Yeah, three fucking times I was shot at. And the first time I thought somebody threw a rock at me because I'm a cyclist. So I'm riding my bike and I hear the zoom of the bullet. And you know, you usually hear the sound late after it's shot. Yes. But I didn't, I didn't, think, I didn't think it was a bullet. So I, was, I just kept going. Until one day a policeman came at home and said he was looking for me because he thought I was a thug. 
So literally, I was dead like three times without even knowing. So this is this is the kind of place I grew up in. Oh my yeah. word. So, so, so what you're <laughs> yeah. saying is that we're fortunate to be listening to the story because it could have been over a very oh, long time ago. I, 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 uh, trust me, if, if it wasn't, okay, I'm a believer, I pray a lot and I say, if it's not God, we would not be having this conversation today. I mean, it's like he was just, you know, deflecting. Like, yeah, this guy just came and told me, I have shot at you three times and it's like you ride your bike so fast I can't shoot you. Can you imagine somebody telling you things like this? Oh, and then my oh, question no. is like, why? Like, why? And they said, we suspect you're a thief. Just because, you know, I had started uh, growing this hair. Yep. So it was pointing like this. Yeah. Uh, so they assumed just automatically, I'm a thug. And imagine, you can die out of suspicion down here, just out of suspicion, because I almost died out of suspicion. So again, the I can say for that time, it was around uh, 2012, 2013, the pressure became too much. Uh, I think even around that time, I got, I got even stabbed in the head <laughs> with thugs as well. So I was fighting police and I was fighting thugs. So I had to move away a bit and I got work in Egypt as a hotel animator. So during my times at the hotel animator is where now I discovered pro gaming properly. You know, I was just gaming before, but now while in Egypt, I got the chance to play with Russian pro players because I was working in these hotels and many of them, uh, they, they had Russian guests. Yes. And then it happened, I had carried my PS3 and I had MK9 and I was like, yeah, I challenge you, let's go play. So every time they would whoop my ass, they whoop my ass until I understood how fighting games work. And I'll talk, and I talk, for, Brian, Brian yeah, I think yeah, that's that's yeah. a very important point that you make there because I think I think a lot of gamers, a lot of people that I've spoken to talk talk about the fact that that they believe that they've got a PS, uh, whatever number it is, and and they instantly become good, and it and it doesn't yeah. work like that. You actually have to have your ass kicked, and you have to have your ass kicked often and badly so that you can actually start and, learning. And, and properly, um, <laughs> you get <laughs> you miss the word properly. You get it handed to you properly. You consider breaking the controller, but then again, you come and remember you are poor. The console is not yours, and the controller is not yours. So if you break it, you might go to jail. So you have to keep calm. Yeah. So I, I kept losing, and I can say for the first three months, I didn't understand what was going on, and then. When I got a grasp of what was going on, I used to play my games at the kids' corner. Yeah, yeah. so the kids' corner was where I used to play because there was the only place in the hotel that had a free TV. So I was like, yeah, let's go to the kids' corner. They would go back and come back for holiday and they just find a man, different person totally. And I just got love for this, you know? And before I had gone to Egypt, I was working as a storyboard illustrator. So during my free time, I was on YouTube and watching tournaments. But again, like I said, watching and playing were two different things. Yeah. So I got the interest. But when I started playing with these guys is what, when I actually understood what it means to actually even play games, not even being a pro player. So I just got interested in this. And I said, if people can get money from this, I, I believe I'm also a person who can get money from this. And I think from then on, I just decided I am going to stick with this. Yeah. And when and, and when did when when did that that realization dawn on you that you listen, you're actually now good enough to actually yeah. make money and potentially make a living from playing games. Yeah. When did that happen? So I came back to Kenya in 2014. I was in Egypt in 2013. So when I came back to Kenya in 2014, there were these misconceptions that were around me by then. People thought that yeah, you've been away, you've been in Egypt, you have money now, you know. And when I came back, like I said, uh, I'm the father in my family. Yeah? I have these six siblings. Two of them were in high school at the same time. The other two were in primary school. My mom is there. She's sick. She doesn't work. So when I came back, my money went to making a house and uh, trying to feed and make sure my brothers go to school, get dressed. And before I knew it, my money was finished. And out there, I couldn't get employment from anywhere because people thought that, oh, this guy has money. He's come from abroad. Yeah. So... What I was left with in my hands was my gaming and my art. And these were two things that I could do properly with my hands. So I said, yeah, what the hell? Let me go with gaming, yeah? So I kept doing, uh, I kept drawing and gaming. And then around 2015, I got sponsorship to go to 
ADMI, then this place I got to learn graphic design because I was always passionate about art and design. So during my design school, uh, funny, I was we were two students in my class. So I was better than the other. So the problem was when I realized I was better, I spent most of my time in YouTube watching more gaming videos. Uh, this was, <laughs> yeah, this was the time Mortal Kombat uh, 11. No, Mortal Kombat X. Was, was coming out. So they dropped the first trailer and I see Kano, my favorite character. They dropped Quanti and I was like, I am fucking playing this game, you know? So in school, I can swear, in college, instead of doing design, I was good at design, but I was doing pro gaming. Like I was just online, studying moves, watching Sonic Force games, watching, uh, what's his name? Foxy Grandpa, watching uh, this guy who used to, man, I was all over. I mean, I could name, everyone who was good at MK, if you ask me, like, you would just wake me in the middle of the night and I would tell you moves often, you know? So it was in that time that also in Kenya, we had the first MK tournament or the first tournament fighting game. And it was sponsored by Vivid Gold. Yeah. And guess what? They put MKX. And I didn't even have a console and I didn't even have the game because I was supposed to get them bought by then, but I was short on cash. I had won a bet actually, and the bet was for 50k. So I said, if I get this money, I'm buying the console and the game, you know? Yeah. But Vivid Gold kind of aid in delivering the game. So imagine the first tournament I went for MK, I played the game at the tournament. <laughs> oh, my word. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> what was that experience like? I mean, obviously, you've been learning, um, watching, like you said, playing and watching of two very, very different hey. games. Uh, watching uh, two different things, my friend, I was just there, I was like, wow, I'm pressing and things are not happening. And then they did a mistake <laughs> and they, they put the tournament, they put the tournament on a IMAX screen. The distance from the console and the controllers was something. Me being green, I didn't even understand that the distance between the two things matters. So there was lag. You're pressing something, it doesn't come out. Man, the stress that was there, the anxiety, the excitement, I was confused. I was a bit confused. And I ended up getting between, I think if it's not fourth, it's third place. Imagine, I was only getting five minutes to practice before the actual match. And uh, me being a Jack fan, I was just like, yeah, I'm just going to wing it. You know, I got fourth place or third. I, I don't remember perfectly, but it was between third and fourth place. And why? Actually, the controller dropped sync. Like, I just stood there and I died watching. And I was like, hey, my controller just died sick. Like, what the fuck? And I just got pissed off and I, I didn't continue the tournament. I remember I was pissed off. I was like, fuck it. Because I knew I was good back then. But yeah, I later came and met the real man out here. And I learned that, no, there's a lot to learn. So that was my first experience as a pro gamer in this country. And it went from very worse and sometimes it was good. But let's say the perseverance got me here to where I am able today to talk to you as based yeah okay. it wasn't an easy journey i would say that uh i had the resources that i could go to the tournament man sometimes i remember i used to participate in tournaments where people didn't have money and they were waiting for the prize money so that they can pay for the registration fee <laughs> can you imagine like you don't have the money to register for the tournament but you take part in it and promise that yeah i'm gonna win and then i'm gonna pay you <laughs> then i'll pay you back oh but fantastic yeah that's our yeah yeah that's that's the that's the and, environment that we had now for game yeah and, and and now tommy i mean all these years later i mean we obviously have um have mk11 out at the moment um yeah what 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 is the 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 fighting game scene like in kenya right now uh, it's it's uh, at the moment it's it's getting populated it's getting populated so in 2019 i got to work with safaricom and safaricom is one of the biggest isps in the country yeah. so my job was to i was called the gaming mentor pro gaming mentor but i wanted the title of gaming mentor because i felt not everybody's equipped with the capacity to be uh pro gamer you know it takes a lot of sacrifice a lot of time and i'm also looking at the infrastructure of kenya not so many people can afford to own a console i mean even myself i was not able to own psn for a while you know so i was telling myself i don't want to put unrealistic goals on people knowing very well the capabilities of the countries you know so 
what I tried to do during that time in 2019 was I was being taken around campuses and colleges and universities in the country. And my job was to talk to the youth about gaming. So I tried to incorporate gaming launches as a way to earn money. I tried to incorporate design in gaming. I tried to incorporate journalism in gaming, the pro aspect as well, game development. These are the things I was talking about. Like I said, I want us to close that gap. We are 20 years behind in yeah. Africa. Yeah. And the way to close that gap is to create the ecosystem for gaming. And the ecosystem is in this design, the setups and everything, you know? merchandise selling of equipment so if there are people in this then you're as a pro player guaranteed to get somebody to help you one way or the other to achieve your dreams yeah because yes. if you only have pro players and you don't have people selling equipment you don't have people to set up or organize the tournaments your 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 pro gaming is useless yeah so that was what I was doing in 2019. So I didn't have enough time to even, I don't play Mortal Kombat as well, uh, Mortal Kombat 11, as well as I did X, because it came out around 2019. And during this time, I was just busy around the country, talking to guys. And also there was a challenge in MKX. So if you could beat me in a round, you could get 5,000 uh, worth of airtime. Okay. which I can say I was tight. I was like, nah, for this first time, I'm not going to let anybody beat me. So I had a clean streak. Like, yeah, nobody You're nasty. Me, you know? You're nasty. And that's why you've got yeah. this nickname called the Beast. Yeah, exactly. So I was I was just like, make, make it clear, like, this is the Beast, you know? So yeah, next time you can beat me, but this first time I'm just trying to go and be her. So we had that round and uh, I can say it was it was a good run. And then COVID came. And it kind of upset the balance, but people maintained and they moved the scene to the online side. So at the moment, as I can say, uh, I am in charge with a co uh, with a friend of mine. We run a local FGC. I myself, I had started with my friends a group called Rampage, and for us, we just said we want to build Mortal Kombat. So we used to do Mortal Kombat tournaments from Mortal Kombat X, and then we moved. We even have it on YouTube. We moved to Mortal Kombat 11, and since I was not playing so well, my friends were playing. So my job became uh, commentating the matches, planning the matches and all that. And that's what I do to date. I organize online tournaments, and not only in Mortal Kombat, but every other game as well. I work closely with PSG. I don't know if you've heard of them. Yes. Pro Series Gaming. Yes. Pro Series Gaming. Yes, I work under them and my job right now is to run tournaments and I run a wide variety of tournaments from mobile, PC to console. Yes, I am a pro model combat player, but right now, like I said, I want to diversify and make sure people are make, taking part in this. So if I can get you playing Call of Duty and I can get you other Call of Duty players, this is a chance for you to level up as a pro gamer. Yeah. So at the, at the moment, this is something I'm doing so much. And MK scene is, 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 is very strong. The problem is, most of the people in the scene are students, so they have to balance between school and play. No, it's not like me who went to college. I was like, yeah, I'm a good designer. Let me just study MK, you know? It's, it's different right now a bit with them. So they're taking it slow, but the scene is very alive. I mean, even if you look at uh, F it's FGC Africa, the combat, yes. combat league, yeah, yeah, Bob, Bob uh, Bilal. Bilal yes. is a member of Rampage. Yes, B Bilal is a member of my team. Okay. So him being there, he's representing. I mean, the last time he fell out because of the internet connection, but he's representing. So we always try to make sure we have at least one or two people participating in these tournaments because of the infrastructure, as I said, it's kind of expensive for us down here. And there are not so many players in the scene at the moment for MK11. So I feel it's my job to get more people into it. And that's what I'm actually currently trying to do. So hopefully if this year opens up and Corona reduces, uh, you're going to see a lot of MK people from down here. Yeah. No, I we are, we are up, yeah. Yeah, yeah. South yeah, Africa. Yeah. Brian, yeah, so Brian, that, it's nice. been yeah. it's been an absolute absolute pleasure and honor chatting to you. This is not the first time we're going to be talking. Definitely going to be doing it yeah. a lot more this year. But my final yeah. question to you, okay? Yeah. And I'm sure you're pretty yeah. empty, pretty amped about it. What are your yeah. thoughts on the trailer for the new MK movie? I have waited for it for 20 years. I, I don't care. You know, people are like, 
they, they don't look like what they look like. They, 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 they. I'm like, fuck, you would have made it yourself if you could do it. But if you can't, let's just sit down, see what they give to us. I don't care if they change the story. I, I personally, I'm a Jack's main. I know every single way Jax has lost his arms. First, he lost them to Emak. He lost them to Baraka. He lost them to Goro in the last movie we saw, the animation. Yes. And now they made it Sub-Zero. And I don't care. In fact, I'm a fan of uh, the Sub-Zero actor. His name is Jota Sleep. I'm a big fan of him. And I'm like, you know what? We, we can't just start shaming shit before we see it. Correct. Because me, I'm like, if you shame it, please give us something better. But if you can't give us something better or even give us something, please, let's just keep quiet. Yeah, shut up. See what Absolutely. they're going to give us. Shut up and let's wait and see. I have waited 20 fucking years, man. 20 fucking, I'm 29 right now. I first saw my <laughs> MP when I was seven years. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't care. And Goro is in the trailer. Fuck it. I'm watching. Chicken. Even if it's going to be suckish, I mean, at least somebody took the effort to give us a movie. I don't care. I am waiting. My fingers are crossed. I'm just like, what I've seen, I mean, even uh, the Scorpion actor, that has been the Scorpion actor in my head. I'm always like, yeah, if I get the chance to make this movie, this is Scorpion. I guess what? The movie gives us him a Scorpion. So I'm, I'm like, I'm, me, I'm, I'm ready. If guys are trashing it, it's good for them. For us, we are just waiting to see it. It's just like, yeah, we've been seeing trash people die because of COVID. I mean, we need to see something with change. Let's see the fatalities. They said fatalities will be there. We want to see them, you know? Absolutely. And compare them to the game, you know? Like, you have it freeze and like, yeah, this is exactly like it is in the game. That's what I'm actually waiting to do. Yeah. Well, I'm, 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 I'm absolutely fascinated and waiting to see it. I can't, I can't lie. We all hope it's going to yeah. actually work out as good as the trailer is. I mean, I'm definitely looking forward to it. You and I both in the same boat there. Brian, once again, yeah, we, yeah. Th thanks so much for your time. I'm looking forward yeah. to the next conversation. And uh, maybe we can talk a little bit more about the pro gaming aspect and what you're doing um, when we chat in the next couple of months. No problem, sir. I'll just be here waiting, Mark. Uh, it's an, it's a pleasure for having this opportunity, man. Uh, I just feel like it's it's time for Africa to make noise, yeah. Yes, it's, oh it's time we make noise. We're gonna it's time, do it. It's time we let them know we are here and we are fans. So yeah, you have to acknowledge us. It's it's that time. Yeah, Brian, thank, thank you, you so much. Thanks for your time. You have a great fit, great day. Uh, you too, man.